Well, all our speakers have arrived. Uh, we've lost 15 minutes, but we'll try to gain it as we move along through the program. So welcome, welcome to everyone. Um, for those of you whom I don't know, uh, my name's Jane Clark, and I'm the CEO and Managing Director of SIM, the Coalition for Innovative Media Measurement. And I'd like to just warmly welcome all of you to our fourth annual cross-platform media measurement and data summit. And those of you who are paying attention may notice that the title has changed slightly uh, from prior years um, to add the word data. Um, and this is because, as we all know, there are two big trends that are impacting the media measurement today. So when SIM was formed, one key initiative was to foster solutions for cross-platform measurement to address how consumers are increasingly place shifting, time shifting, and device shifting their consumption of content and ads. And so you'll hear a lot about that today. Now the other initiative was to enhance the measurement of television using return path data. And this is part of the other big trend in measurement today, which is the growth of big data or data exhaust, or smart data, or whatever you want to call it. But it's changing the way that marketers want to plan, buy, and evaluate the best way to get their message to their target audience at the right time across the optimal mix of content and device experiences. So as we're witnessing, marketers, media companies, and agencies are all constructing their own data clouds where they can bring together first party sales and site registration data with TV return path data and digital exposure data, all enriched by third party data providers who know everything about us, except when they don't. As I discovered recently when I visited uh, Axiom's About Your Data site, which I highly recommend as a good reality check to see how a, a machine describes your life. Um, but anyway, today's program will provide you with the latest developments in these two intersecting areas of media measurement. Now, most of you know that SIM is a coalition of buyers and sellers of media, and it's vitally important that we represent all three end user groups for media measurement. The media companies, the media buying agencies, and the advertisers. And speaking of advertisers, I just want to take this opportunity to give a special welcome to SIM's newest member, uh, which is the Association for National Advertisers, the ANA, representing over 600 advertisers. And if those of you who are here in the room from the ANA today, I think I saw CEO Bob Leodis, we have Bill Duggan and one of his committees over here, and Duke Finelli, um, just, you know, welcome. <laughs> You know, we're so pleased to have you bring the voice of more advertisers uh, to SIM's mission. You know, which is basically that the SIM member companies bring their thought leadership together to collaborate, to prepare RFPs, to pilot test new measurement tools that meet the needs of the end users. We champion industry initiatives that may require patience and multi-year planning. We work to drive change in media measurement. And I'd also like to shout out a big thank you to all of the SIM member, uh, the SIM member, the individual SIM members, not just the companies, but the individual members who give their time and their talent um, to push forward important industry initiatives, you know, many of which you'll hear about today. So just a big shout out to all the SIM members for all the, the help. I mean, SIM really is the members. Now, most of you have seen this slide since SIM has been following the same roadmap for five years since our launch. It explains how SIM plans the scope of our cross-platform measurement initiatives. So first, we're developing and testing solutions for understanding how any consumer segment uses all media at whatever time and place and company and in whatever mood Next, we're working on solutions for measuring unduplicated reach and frequency 
for content and ads. And then finally, we're getting smarter about how to evaluate the impact of cross-platform campaigns. So in this first area, in 2011, SIM conducted the pilot test for USA Touchpoints, the cross-media planning tool that originated in the UK and is now being launched in 20 countries under the direction of Reality Mine. I think I see Rolf Swinton and Alice and Jim here and uh, their whole crew today. Um, with uh, Starcom MediaVest also as their charter client. So this is terrific. Um, and in the second area, today you're going to see the first results from SIM's phase two pilot test of Comscore's Project Blueprint, which is the solution that ESPN and now 10 other SIM member companies um, and soon the uh, three cross-platform ad campaigns as well, um, that we've piloted to measure unduplicated reach across platforms. And I'd just like to give a shout out to the team at Comscore. This was not easy and they've done, they've worked incredibly hard over the last year to, to make this happen. So thank you very much. Um, and as far as this third area, which is very s important, you know, in evaluating the effectiveness of campaigns, um, where we stand is on SIM's website, you can find a white paper on the strengths and challenges with the standard tools uh, that rely on a mix of surveys and passive measurement to measure campaign effectiveness. Um, and you'll also see the results of a single source study that SIM pioneered uh, with Symphony Advanced Media in 2012 and I think they're all here today, Charlie and his team, um, to bring passive cross-platform exposure measurement to this kind of evaluation. Um, and today, you'll hear for the first time the highlights of a new SIM white paper that Gerard Broussard has authored to help assess the quality of many of the new sources of data that are increasingly being used and matched to media data to segment optimize and evaluate not only digital media, but television. And back to the second area, you'll also hear today from Chris Lennon about a new RFP from the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, SIMPTI, to bind into the essence of video using an audio, audio watermark technology, the open standard metadata from the industry's content and ad registries, IDER, the Entertainment ID Registry, and Ad ID from the A and A and the four A's. So Kip Welch and uh, Don Delcinos, if you want to put your hand up, they're here from Ider. Kip wears the best hats, but he took it off, I guess. Um, and Harold Geller from Ad ID. Uh, so if you want to find them during the break, and if you have any questions for them, also in your packets, there's uh, that you picked up at the registration desk. There's an FAQ about both registries to help to continue to support and drive their adoption throughout the whole media ecosystem. You know, this partnership with SIMPTI may sound like we're talking about the plumbing layer of the industry, but an open standard for binding registered metadata, standardized registered metadata into the essence of video will revolutionize the speed and efficiency with which we receive and can optimize impressions for television and cross-platform video, to say nothing of other enhancements such as uh, enabling, better enabling uh, dynamic ad insertion in VOD. So I want to just take a few minutes before we get into the program to point out um, some of SIM's thought leadership in defining what we call the seven criteria that we feel are needed for complete cross-platform exposure measurement. Now, these are principles that we've developed that have been baked into all of our RFPs over the past few years. And the first is that as, as we've come to see, single source samples just are going to be too small to be the only measurement solution for a cross-platform world. They just can't capture the fragmented media behavior at the level of particular shows and videos. I don't think this is news to anyone. You know, they can still be used as important sources of, of measurement within single media, and they can be useful to calibrate against census data by linking the individual level demographics and the intermedia behavior in a single source panel 
by linking this to the census type volumetric measures for both digital and for television. But we're just coming to see that panels aren't going to be enough in a cross-platform world. Now, it may be stating the obvious, but the least amount of intrusiveness required by respondents is optimal for the highest quality of behavioral measures of media exposure. This also pertains to studying ad effectiveness or multi-channel attribution. If you don't have an accurate, clean measure of exposure, you can't understand the impact of an ad. So to get passive measurement, we need census-style machine or server data across all platforms, especially TV. But this isn't only for identifying segments, optimizing the media by, and ROI evaluation, but increasingly for transacting media sales, as you'll hear about from Joan Gilman from Time Warner Cable. But increasingly, uh, but uh, wait a minute, sorry. Return path data can be blind matched in a privacy compliant way to an increasing variety of big data sets, which can finally help the industry move from buying based on age and gender, surrogates, to these purchaser segments, and even towards guaranteeing an ROI against those segments. But as we'll hear today, we need to understand and continue to test the quality of these data, and we need to accurately combine them across platforms. You know, we still ideally need person-level calibration data to accurately combine and deduplicate media exposures for individuals across platforms, and you'll hear about that today. However, the household-level data is very useful as a way to combine uh, data sets and link them. Now it's become increasingly clear to most in the industry that we need to add up total usage separately for content and for ads across the platforms. And we need to actually measure ad impressions for TV, not only for compar comparability across platforms, but increasingly for comparability within TV formats, such as dynamic ad insertion in VOD. So as we start to test and use these new cross-platform measurement systems, it also becomes increasingly obvious that we need to align the metrics for ad exposure across platforms. We need to have flexibility in our systems to define time periods consistently, as well as the units of analysis, such as duration-weighted viewable impressions for video across platforms. And you'll, you'll hear a lot more about this on the panel later um, about metrics. And finally, as mentioned earlier, the industry needs an open standard to bind media identifiers into both ads and content to enable greater speed, efficiency, and comparability throughout the whole industry.